So rather than go and find and search the internet for a whole bunch of different videos, I decided to make a video for you guys myself. So what I would like for you to do is we're going to take notes on the video so that when we get in class tomorrow, we can go over and actually practice a lot of the concepts in the class. So what I want you to do is get out a sheet of paper, go find a pencil. Yes, I want you to actually go get pencil and paper, which means you may have to pause this to go get it. And then I want you to take your paper and on this side, that's going to be totally for you. It's a literally a space for your thoughts. On your paper, you can write space for my thoughts or not write anything at all. I'll leave that totally up to you. But as I go through the notes, if you come up with any questions or concerns or anything along those lines, you can go ahead and um, write them, jot them down in that space right there. Um, I've actually already recorded this video once, but it was 13 minutes, so I'm going to try to cut it down. So if you need to pause this to catch up, pause it and catch up. Sure, I will find a couple of typos and misspellings as I go, and I may correct those as well. So let's start with what a quadratic equation looks like. First of all, a quadratic equation looks like a parabola. It's a U-shape. It can go up or it can turn down. In either direction, the arrows go on to infinity, whether it's focused up or down. It's just fine. The, and some of the important parts of the graph are labeled. So this part where the U bends right there is called the vertex. The points where it touches the x-axis, and it would usually be two places, are known as the roots. It's also known as the solutions, also known as the zeros, also known as the x-intercepts. I'm sure that you're quite familiar with all four of those words, but some of you may not realize that all four of those words mean the exact same thing. Roots, solutions, zeros, x-intercepts. They're interchangeable words in math. This line right here is the axis of symmetry. If you take a look, that's the line that the graph is symmetrical around. So it's the ax axis of symmetry. Forms of quadratic equations. Quadratic equations come in two forms. They come in a general form, which is also known as the standard form. And it looks like this. y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. a, b, and c are all constant numbers. You will need a, b, and c when you're using the quadratic formula, the axis of symmetry, and I put and determinant, but determinant's not the right word. That's a word that's used for matrices, which you'll also see next year, but that's not the right word for today. It's discriminant. That's the correct word. And we'll get into all those formulas as we continue. All right? So then... The next form, and yes, you may need to pause it at this point to write some of this stuff down, because I am going kind of quickly, but it's going to keep the video a little shorter. So vertex form is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. I do not know why they picked the letters h and k, but I know it's not confusing with the x or the y that's already there, and that may have something to do with it. Okay, this is the same a that we find up here in the general form. They are used the same letter on purpose because it would be the exact same number. An equation can be written like this and can also be written like this and be the exact same equation just written in two different forms. The vertex form is called the vertex form because you can see the vertex right in the middle of the the equation. So the h becomes the x value of your vertex and the k becomes the y value of your vertex. If you'll notice this says x minus h and this just says h. What that means for you is that the h will be the opposite sign of how it's shown in the equation. So if it's negative here it becomes positive. If it's positive here it becomes negative. So just some examples of what these types of equations look like. All right. Standard form examples would have something like f of x equals negative 2x squared plus 4x minus 7. Or y equals 3x squared plus 2x plus 1. All right? If I was making this up, I would have put the x squared and the x, maybe some pluses or minuses, and just filled in the numbers. That's all it takes. So what I want you to do right now is pause the video. I want you to try so on a separate sheet of paper, I want you to create a quadratic equation that's in standard form. So just take a second and go ahead and jot that down. Label it number one because there's a couple other problems like this you're going to do. 
after you get done with that, just some other little notes about standard form. You can have it without the b value. So x squared plus 1, even though it doesn't have three pieces to it, this is still in standard form. It's just your b equals 0. Same thing here. y equals x squared plus 2x. Still in standard form. I just don't have an extra constant out here. That means that constant equals 0. This one, however, y equals 2x plus 7, well, it doesn't have a squared. That means it's not quadratic anymore. If your a equals 0, then it's not actually quadratic. It becomes a linear function instead of a quadratic, more like a y equals mx plus b kind of formula than a quadratic. So some examples of what they'll look like in vertex form. y equals 2 times x minus 3 squared plus 7. That's an example of vertex form. Your vertex here would be 3, 7. Okay? Or y equals, and if I didn't have anything there, x minus 4 squared plus 2. Well, if I don't have anything there, I can put that understood 1, which means a equals 1. So this isn't a, a equals 0 if it's not written there, it's a 1. Next, just a couple more examples. I've got a x minus 4 squared with nothing written out here, but that's okay. That just means your k value equals 0. And then the last example that I have is y equals x squared plus 1. Well, I use this exact same example up here in standard form. It doesn't make it less not in vertex form just because it can also be written in standard form. You can still see the vertex. There's nothing added to the x before it's squared, so the x value or k value is 0. And your 1 would be just like this number out here. So where h equals 0, k would equal positive 1. So I told you you'd have more opportunities to practice these, so now I want you to try and make up two examples of quadratic equations that are in vertex form. Write them with your first equation. So that first one was number one. Let's let these two examples be numbers two and three. When you're done doing that, I want you to take a look at these problems down here on that same sheet of paper, so this would be numbers four and five. I want you to identify the vertex of each of these problems here. And then I want to give you a challenge. This is not in vertex form, but there is a way to figure out what the vertex is. I want to see if you can remember how to do that. So this is your challenge problem there, and it's where the other five problems are just due tomorrow. Your challenge problem could get you some tickets if you can come up with the right answer for that one. So I hope this video helps. We'll get the notes out of the way now, and we can worry about actually doing the stuff in class tomorrow. So we'll see you guys then. Have a good night. Bye.